why he because I mean he because I mean that says a lot too. But don't forget who's playing second base, Lux. Who's playing shortstop, Seager. Jeter Downs wouldn't even break that lineup. Shohei Otani. A lot of people don't know what to do with Otani. He's supposed to be back pitching in mid-May. Uh, so let's just monitor that. Now, in 2018, this is crazy. Otani, his opponents hit 036. Any time they're at bat ended on Otani's splitter. They were 2 for 55. And that was the lowest opposition batting average for any pitcher on any pitch type with a minimum of 150 pitches. I mean, he, when he ended in a bat with a splitter, 2 for 55. Holy mackerel. So he's making progress, all right? And he's really among Madden's most important concerns over the next six weeks in Arizona. So the Angels are targeting mid-May for Otani's return to the big league mound. Billy Epler said that Tuesday, while pitchers and catchers reported to the uh, Diablo, what is it, Tempe Diablo Stadium? I think that's where they train. Otani will be available as a designated hitter, however, on opening day, uh, but he will take days away from the big league team so that he can make rehab pitching starts in the minors. So for those of you who are anxious to get Otani, He's not going to. He's not going to be in the lineup. He's going to be making rehabs, pitching starts in the minors. So even though he could be playing, they want him to pitch as, as well. So they have really detailed plans for Otani's final comeback from Tommy John surgery. And this, remember, he also had off-season knee surgery, and that pushed his pitching progress back. So uh, it's it's, it's kind of crazy. So he's he's a. I think the Angels are going to be a tremendous. I love the Mike Trout and uh, combination with Anthony Rendon, and that's why I took in the draft that we had. We had an American League draft. Anthony Rendon was my pick as the second pick in the draft. I shocked the world. I took Anthony Rendon number two. That's right. I mean, three fifteen batting average. Anybody complain about that? Uh, 30 to 35 home runs. Anybody complain about that? 125, 130 RBIs with Mike Trout. Anybody complaining about that? The only thing you don't get is you don't get the stolen bases. So, big deal. So you get stolen bases, and you get guys like Kiermaier, uh, who um, he thought he was going to be traded, by the way. I read an article that Kiermaier really thought he was going to be traded, and was really relieved that he wasn't. Because uh, he just really was relieved. Jason Kipnis headed to the Cubs. <laughs> you heard it first right here. <laughs> uh, but I didn't say anything about Carlos Gonzalez signing a minor league contract with the Mariners. We talked about the Mariners yesterday. So uh, if you heard yesterday's podcast, you will believe that maybe Cargo can get some at-bats there, okay? Uh, name the pitchers who threw 200 innings in the past six seasons. Uh, name, uh, and not their names, but how many pitchers? How many pitchers do you think threw 200 pitchers in 2019, 2018? Okay, Jason Collette wrote about that. And I really like Jason Collette a lot. So, uh, yeah, 2019. Let's go to 2000, last year. How many pitchers threw 200 innings? Okay, how many? Uh, Pakoda. That's the name of the game. Does anybody follow Pakoda? Uh, I'm going to talk about Pakoda for most of the time, and we'll talk about it a little bit every day. Uh, Pakoda for Major League Baseball. Now, does anybody follow Pakoda? No, I am told that Pakoda, um, you know, projects all the standings and do a lot of projections and the whole thing. If you know what PACOTA is, it's an acronym for Player Empirical Comparisons and Optimization Test Algorithm. I do that every day when I brush my teeth. That's what I do. It's a sabermetric system that they use for forecasting the Major League Baseball player performance and uh, also team performance. And what they do is they actually, this is what I'm told, that they actually play a thousand seasons. 
All right? I mean, a thousand, uh, not a thousand seasons, a thousand games. Yeah, it's a thousand, can't be a thousand <laughs> seasons. They play a thousand games, and then they take an average of what they get in the thousand games that they play. My only question is, and I, I know I'm a little sophomoric when it comes to this, how do they play the games? <laughs> I, I, I get, you know, computer and, and stats and stuff, right? So, and it was Bill Pakoda was the major league player whose name uh, holds a simulation. They play a thousand simulated games, and then they take a, uh, uh, <laughs> George says he feels like he's been around for a thousand seasons. And I think I have too, George. But the point is, is that, so that's what they do. They play a thousand simulated games, and then they take the average of what they find. Okay? And people really buy this stuff, right? I'll take the position that I'm not buying. I mean, I don't know. It's Major League Baseball. It's so hard. But among the things that they come up with, and um, I'll just throw out a couple of uh, highlights here. The um, National League Central Division, the league, the leaders last year were the St. Louis Cardinals. They have them 16 and a half. Uh, they have them, oh, uh, like six games behind Cincinnati. Cincinnati is their pick for the Central Division. St. Louis they have as third. They have Cincinnati winning 86 games and St. Louis winning 80. The winner of the National League East. Now, this blows me the freaking the kingdom come. The winner, according to Pakoda, a thousand games. I don't even want to say it. Andy, you know who it is? Andy is sleeping, and she says it's Bryce Harper. <laughs> so Bryce Harper wins the National League East. <laughs> come on, Andrea, come on, man. What does it mean? Yeah, but I, I'll tell you, I'd like to invite the entire chat room here to watch Andrea sleep one day, okay? Because she comes, she's in the middle of the night, she does auctions, she does bidding. But now when I ask her, who who does Pakoda have as the winner of the National Yeast, Andrea says, Atlanta. They have Atlanta for third with 80, yeah, 82.8 wins. They have the New York Mets winning the National League. Does anybody like Pakoda? Is anybody buying this malarkey? They have the New York Mets winning the National League East with 87.8 games, okay? Uh, the uh, uh, Dodgers are the big winner, 102 and a half games. Okay, they got San Diego second. But all, I, I also, Atlanta's third. Philadelphia, they only have for 76 wins. I think Philadelphia, I think Zach Wheeler's going to be better with the uh, moves that they made. Okay, yeah, still, still. Uh, yeah, so a lot of stuff in the National League. They have uh, Washington second. Marlins, they still have less, but 71 wins. That's not terrible. They have the Chicago Cubs second to Cincinnati with 84 wins. And uh, they have San Diego. I don't like where they have Arizona with only 79 wins. Uh, they have San Diego just ahead of them in second place. And that could go either way. I, that I, I think San Diego and Arizona very close. So I'm not going to argue with that. But when they have the Dodgers at 102, and this is after the Mookie Betts trade, that's pretty freaking unbelievable, right? So there you go. That's a little bit of Pakoda. Tomorrow we'll talk about what Pakoda says. Uh, and, of course, George says the Mets can win the East in 2020, but they usually disappoint. I mean, come on, the Amazons. What do you have to say about that? We got the Amazons. You know what the Amazons means? The Amazons is the amazing Met fans. And uh, he's in the, uh, in the chat room very quiet, probably passed out, to be very candid. Uh, but the Amazons is here. And being very quiet, okay. Pakoda picks. That's why it's not. That's why it's not the trout projections. It's the Pakoda projections. Oh, my prime time. What do you think? It's a New York team. You should appreciate, Doctor Bob. Nice to have you with us, Doctor Bob. Okay. Now let's do a couple of things that I actually prepared for now. Okay. 
Uh, as I mentioned, Jason Kipnis expected to be added to the mix at second base. So the competition at second base became even more intriguing. Why is it intriguing? And Kipnis is a Northbrook native. And every time we go into a place in Northbrook, one of, you know, the uh, Jewish Center or a couple other places, it's all about Jason Kipnis. He's a star. He had 70 home runs for the last four seasons, expected to join the Cubs on a minor league contract, passing a physical. He's only 32. He gives the Cubs a strong left-handed hitting option, okay? And he could join a second grace. Now, here's what they got. Nico Horner, I believe Nico Horner now uh, has to start the year in AAA. They got David Bote. They got Hernan Perez. They got Daniel Del Scalso. And they got Carlos Aswagi, whatever his name is, A-S-U-A-G-E. You remember? I have to play for a different team. But that's that, to me, makes me a little suspicious about Nico Horner and his playing time. Okay. Now, David Ross is the new manager, and when he was asked the question, as he's been asked many times about different aspects of the team, when it came to his list of candidates to bat leadoff, uh, he said Anthony Rizzo is not ruled out. Now, Rizzo is a lifetime 426 on-base percentage in 240-something plate appearances batting leadoff. And in 2019, he actually um, was tremendous. He had a 500 on base percentage in 46 plate appearances, batting leadoff. How do you not bat him leadoff? I mean, you have to bat lead because he can't run. Ah, he did. I don't know. The Cubs, 294 on base percentage from the leadoff spot in 2019. Now, lead, oh, man. So for those of you who are looking for Anthony Rizzo, uh, remember, you can get him, but he's going to crap out on RBIs. Crap out. Batting leadoff. I'm telling you, Mookie Betts, Anthony Rizzo, uh, batting leadoff. You got to crap. I mean, Betts had 80 RBIs last year batting leadoff for the, for the Red Sox. The Cubs, 294 on base percentage from the leadoff spot in 2019. Am I talking low enough, uh, fast enough? That was the lowest in the National League. So how do you not put a Rizzo leadoff? So if you're looking for Anthony Rizzo, terrific player, but be careful. He may get you some. He may start stealing again. Okay, and uh, this is don't forget new manager here. The whole thing, new manager. Okay, you got that? A brand new manager, and I say brand. Um, you know that's something that a lot of us in the chat room probably need right about now. A little brand, right? But uh, Rizzo could be the guy. All right, I put up a uh, a poll on Twitter. And on uh, Facebook. Now, the poll is very simple. Uh, and it goes something like this. Ketel Marte. Will Ketel Marte have all-star stats this year as per 2019? Now, we only have about uh, have slightly less than 100 votes so far. Will Ketel Marte have all-star stats this year? as he did in 2019. Will he hit those home runs? And, uh, the We've had about, we got about 73% that say no. 73% say no on Twitter. That is very interesting. That's a very large percentage that uh, a lot of people do not believe that Cattell Marte is going to have anywhere near what he had last year. Okay. Now, on Facebook, I'm just looking at it. Now, Facebook and Twitter are always different. Uh, but on Facebook, uh, we have uh, 18, 18 uh, we have 15 people say no, and nine people say yes. What do we think? Will Cattell Marte do what he did last year with some terrific all star stats? Okay, that's the answer right there. And and look, uh, 
They lost, you know, look, they found 